bang haters, sorry, I had to do it. I got a five head. Bangs are important. Got a bit of an unusual project today. I actually want to flip this cute little step ladder. I don't know, something about it just made me go, oh, I love this. And I'm gonna try using a whitewash. So that'll be something different. Also, something really cool I picked up in an unexpected place. See this box, this crate? I got this at Costco. So um, it's actually free. It's just in the wine section. They happen to have one that was had like maybe two bottles in it. So I moved those to another basket and boom, I was on it. They said, sure. Quick gadget review. I absolutely love this palm sander, but I have to say that my uh, cordless sander, you've seen me use on other tasks, it's wonderful because of its versatility. However, its negatives are its battery power doesn't seem to give it as much strength as I can get off of my palm sander. And obviously because it's corded, it can last a lot longer. I also like the fact that the versatility of the sandpaper, I mean, I can buy whatever sandpaper and cut it to this size to fit in and it works great. Whereas the other one has to be Velcroed on and it has to be that particular size. So, palm sender if you don't mind messing with the cord. Another tip on cords, when it comes to using extension cords, which I am right now, always make sure that your extension cord is at least, if not thicker, than the cord of the machine or item you're plugging into it. So, you know, those little skinny extension cords you use for Christmas lights, that would not work with this. Experiment time. Ordinarily, if this were a nice piece of furniture that I was gonna do a whitewash with, I might use a pre-stain to put on this first before I do any of my other staining techniques. But because I'm practicing, I'm gonna just use water to get them kind of saturated. And then I'm gonna try one of two techniques. All right, the classic easiest way to do a whitewash is simply just use 50% water, 50% paint, white paint, brush it on, leave it sit for about a minute, wipe it off. Now you can do a slightly darker tone if you want or a more intense tone if you want by doing say a 30% water, 70% paint and then just leave it on and then sand it later to your liking. It's your choice. I'm going to go for the 50-50, one minute rest, wipe off. Oh, another super cool technique is to get a whitewash using grout. The pre-mixed grouts are great. You just smudge them all on and then you use a scraper, a plastic preferred, um, to get the grout back out and gently and it will remain in certain grooves and in areas where there's nicks in the wood to fill it. It gives a very dull finish, a very matte finish, and it fills in those gaps. But do remember to pre-treat the wood with water before you go this route. Now, what I'm doing though, is because I didn't wanna go out and get the grout, the pre-mix just for this test run, I am actually using my stucco and it works better later when I tried it by watering it down first to get it more of a grout consistency. And the results are, this first one is what happens when you just put the um, stucco or spackling in my case. And I have to say, one nice thing is, is if you have really nicked up wood, when this goes on, everything's soft again. Um, then we have just the straight up watered down chalk paint, which this is definitely a white looking stain on it, but it just doesn't have enough character for me, I think. And then this one, I did a combo of the two. So I've got the stucco and, and grout kind of in where it's rough, and then it's got more white on it where it's the paint. But there is another one. On this side, what I did is I just left the paint on a little longer and it had it a little slightly thicker when I did it. 
in the end I decided to go with the combo of the two. So first I watered it down and now I'm putting the watered down stucco. Honestly they'll go with the premixed grout if you're doing this on something nicer. But you just slather it on and then you kind of scrape it off and leave it to dry. The biggest thing about any of this though is uh, drips are not your friend. So see how on the edge there? Ah, finally I got that drip off. <laughs> the drips will dry that way and not look very nice and then you gotta go and re-sand and do everything back again. So I went ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing the stucco, just putting it on and scraping it off and leaving it to dry. And then I'm gonna come back and do the 50-50 chalk paint and water mix to brush over the whole piece. I will add that I'm very thankful this is a very forgiving technique because when I started doing the stucco over the print on here it bothered me that it covered up so much of it so I was able to just quickly wipe it off. I didn't mind leaving it around the edges and I still will paint over it. After it dried overnight, here is what we have. I am wiping it down, getting just any of the loose dust that might be around on it off. Dry cloth, that's all. Since it's already had the stucco slash grout technique placed on it, it absorbs paint very easily and is dries faster. So that's why I'm using again the paint wash that is 50-50, 50 water, 50 chalk paint but I am wiping it off without waiting a minute. I'm doing it rather quickly because I don't want it that intense. Of course, if you wanted a more color intense situation with your stain, you would just leave it on longer. Really, the great thing about this technique though is it is so forgiving. So even if you did leave it on too long, you could just sand it. Okay, so it's had a day to dry and I went around with a 220 grit sandpaper and anywhere I saw where there was maybe too much of the stucco or any part that was slightly rough, I went ahead and did the sandpaper to it. Now I have a box that's really soft, feels great to the touch. I don't have to worry about getting any slivers from it. I could store yarn in it and it would work great. Okay, gonna be adding some handles to this. I'm really excited, got these handles, dollar each at the ReStore. ReStore supports Habitat for Humanity. Always check them out. You'd be amazed what you can get there and the great deals you can get too. Finding my drill bit would have been a lot easier if I actually knew what size these screws were, but I don't. So I basically went to felt the girth of them and then I felt a screw or a drill bit that had a similar girth to it. I might be too small, but it's better to be too small than too big. I want the handle to be about here. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have it centered. At this point I go into way overthink it mode. All you really have to do is make sure you do have it centered. Then mark where the little hole should go and then simply drill the holes. And then you take measurements and make sure you duplicate it on the other side of the piece. Another lesson learned, I used the screws that would normally put it into the normal width of a drawer, but this is not, so they were too big. But as luck would have it, I have a plethora of screws. Take two. This is a screw I found this little packet. It was for some project, I have no idea. Can I just say how thrilled I am with how this turned out? It is now gonna be the handiest craft bucket shelf tray. I don't know what to call it, box with handles, um, but I love it. I love how it turned out. I think it looks really cool. I learned a lot. You know, I did this as a white wash using the more classic older, you know, idea of a white paint, but you really, you could use any kind of chalk paint you wanted. This could have been a blue wash. A um, matter of fact, with the other piece, 
I am doing something different. Let's look at that. On this side, what I did is I painted it on, left it on for a minute, and then wiped it off. And then on this side, I first put on some water, and then I painted it on, left it on for a minute, and wiped it off. Hey there! Could you please help out this channel by clicking subscribe and if you click the bell it'll even give you an alert when the next video comes up. Thanks! The side that I didn't use the pre-treat, you know, that didn't put the water on first, it just comes off as sort of cloudy and it's not very even. You know though, it's not a horrible look. If that works for you, that works. Here's how you do it. 50-50 paint and water, put it on, leave it sit for a minute, then wipe it off. But if you want to have a little bit more attention to the groove and not attention to the brush stroke and have it go on a little smoother, those pre-stains, or in this case, water beforehand. All I did is I used the sponge, sponged it on some water. The nice thing about this technique is if you start going through it and you feel like you've put too much uh, white in a section, your wet sponge can lighten it up quite a bit. And you can edit and take some pieces off, follow it through the towel, and you start to see a lighter coverage. I also like to go back through with the sponge and cover areas where joints meet because often that will be uneven. Now you'll notice on these two stairs, there is definitely a difference. This one's so much more of the wood than this one. This is called, I left it sit on for probably closer to two minutes rather than one minute. Now mind you, humidity plays a role. Seriously, humidity has an effect on everything, not just your hair. Um, it made it so that it opened up the pores even more than just the water did, so it kind of absorbed more paint, but it also it affects how long things can stay on it and how long it takes to dry in big ways. All right, now the ladder, the next thing I'm gonna do to it, it would be perfectly fine to leave it where it was, but I am a huge fan of a furniture restorer and refinisher and upholsterer by the name of Jay Blades. Oh, he is quite the artist. You might be familiar with his name if you watch the uh, UK show. It's called The Repair Shop. Love that show. That is my all-time favorite show. But um, I actually knew of Jay's work before he was the host of the show. He does beautiful, beautiful, inspiring work. And he's, you know, refinishes and refurbishes furniture pieces but he'll always do something a little unexpected with a, you know, just a pop of color on it, and it just is so cool. So this is my little homage to him with what I'm doing on this last part with the ladder. Time to look at the finished piece, the stepping ladder. It, the little step ladder turned out great as far as, you know, my attempt at using a whitewash. Really happy with how that looked, but probably my favorite part is the little ode to jade blades and his pops of color and furniture. I love it. I think it looks great. Now, it may not be to everyone's taste, but I personally think it's fabulous. And I know you might be thinking, well, 
it's a ladder what's the big deal you're right that's why I did it it's on a ladder if it turned out horrendous and I didn't like it eh, so what I still have a step ladder that I can keep in the garage and it's still useful but now it's extra useful because I learned two techniques that I will use on furniture that is in my home all the time